Okay, uh, the third one is interesting. Um, as I said, it was my daughter's end of year and we all had to troop up, we had to do a walk up to Les Moody Falls to do the ceremony. Mm. And on the way back, uh, through the bush, um, literally about a metre or two metres to my left, it was low scrubby bushes. Mm. I heard a, I could see the bushes move. There was like a, and almost a low growl, maybe. Mm. Yep. Low noise, low grunting noise. And scooted off into the bush. I thought, that's weird. And I caught the smell. And everybody kept walking. No one saw anything. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. Wow, okay. That, you know, what was that? Wasn't a roo, wasn't a fox, wasn't a cat. Um, and again, it's important to note if you're a bushwalker, a camper, particularly a hunter, you're familiar with the game um, smell. But you learn the sights and sounds of the land when you're doing that. So it doesn't matter what region you're from. I mean, we've got feral cats and foxes across the country and rabbits, so most of us are used to that. You're used to those bush smells because you've sat in the bush um, and hunting your prey. And then, so that was around about 2008. Mm -hmm. And then it was probably 2000 and. 16, 17, when I was in the truck with my yep. indigenous mm. friend. And we had a late night run and he started talking about some spirits and stuff. But when anyway, the conversation progressed. And so I said about these experiences and he goes, oh, the little people. Yeah. And he said, when they go hunting up in the forest at night, yeah, you know, they're all poking mm. their sticks or their spears out uh, as they drive up. And I went, oh, okay. Uh, that's that makes sense in hindsight. Yeah. It goes, you know, meshes in, yeah. and you go, ah, oh, that wasn't a wild yeah. dog because it wasn't really. I didn't really think it was a wild dog, yeah. and the thing that was stalking me in the crop was not a wild dog or a fox. That was something. As you mentioned earlier, um, for people not from Australia, the indigenous people uh, in Australia, their uh, their stories, their law. Uh, etc is full of references to hairy mm. men uh, little people big people etc the you know the yeah. guardians of the bush yeah. and uh, particularly this area where we are the central wheat belt and actually all the way into uh, Perth suburban yeah. we mentioned Les Murdy Falls uh, Les Murdy Falls has a history of sightings I've heard probably at least three from there yep. including uh, my own daughter has had some audible very odd stuff going on there and uh, that's very interesting to hear um, the central wheat belt uh, as I mentioned has indig uh, a great history indigenous tales uh, they have great respect yeah. for, uh, oh, for yeah. the wood yeah. algae and uh, I think it's wise to listen to that. They, uh, they're known to be tricksters and troublemakers. Uh, Cheeky. Mischievous and little men, yeah. apparently, mm. is in the Noongar dictionary. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, we'll carry so on. Move. Yeah. So, nothing, so it seems to happen about every decade, mm. approximately. Yep. Uh, anyway, so I require a property, bought a house in another local town, not far from where we are here and uh, very, um, a lot of indigenous first Australians live in that neighborhood. Uh, it is you know, known for being a little bit rough, but it's also known for the Woodargy, mm. being Woodargy Central. Yeah. Uh, to cut a long story short, uh, I go to the property, hadn't moved in there, and on the front porch, all of a sudden, there was a whole mass, a carpet of the West Australian millet grass which I thought, that's a bit strange. Like it can't blow up the step. Yeah. Can't really blow under the door. Mm. You might get one or two, mm. but it was like a carpet. And um, it looked like the stems had been cut, mm. not broken off yeah. by the wind. And I thought, this is really strange. So I actually thought it might have been um, some First Nations people putting a bit mm. of voodoo on the mm. house because we've moved into the neighborhood. I was going to throw it out, and then something very directly told me to yeah. not do that. Mm. So I scooped it all up, took it home, 
Uh, and my ex at the time spoke to her neighbour who was First Nations and after a long conversation, her neighbour had said, oh, the little people. Yeah. And I went, ping pong. Mm. Uh, and then I asked a healing friend of mine who has good connection to spirit. I said, you know, was this the little people? And apparently they said yes. Mm. And I said, is that because I'm a custodian of the land? And they said, yes, so I rescue yeah. your lizards, mm. your fauna and flora, mm. and, you know, make sure they're good. Yeah. And so it didn't actually see any, but the smell. Mm. So we've talked about this before. Very you know, distinct smell. Yeah, very about. distinct. So it's kind of between every game animal uh, that you smell plus wet carpet. Yeah. Somewhere in mm. that vicinity. Yeah. Uh, and interestingly enough, sometimes when I was gardening at the front um, yard, I would, you know, look as I was gardening look up each end of the street, and quite often um, some Aboriginal folk might be walking up the road. They'd be on the close side to the house, but maybe half the house next door, they would then yep. go to the other side of the road mm. and go around the mm. house. And they did that for the entire two and a half yeah. years or something on the property. And we they never came near our great, house. Great respect. Yeah, yeah. Great. and mm. you know, the neighborhood was, you know, we've got some good families there, but there was yeah. the, you know, the usual dysfunction that can be associated, but never a problem. Mm. No one ever jumped the back fence, no, no one came to the door. Mm. Uh, but very, very often, um, the smell. Yeah. The smell was so that persisted over time. You could smell the whole time I was there. So I I used to talk. You know, we'll talk to them. You know, Mm. know, not verbally. Yeah, no, but absolutely. Um, But I'd thank them for looking after the house. Mm. Uh, I put some food out. Mm. um, The food would go, and the new love of my life, which is she's sitting under the clothesline. (laughs) I had hoped that she may smell the smell. She smelt the smell. Mm. So they're quite often in the drive and Mm. quite often around. Um, no doubt about it. Um, you, you also mentioned that um, in this particular town, um, there's a part of town that is well renowned for the wood Yeah. Uh, and uh, you were living smack bang in that in the middle. part of town. Yeah. 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 Now, can I ask you if you were to, uh, or what is your perception of the f- uh, what the uh, the little people are? and even their physical presentation? Uh, as I said, I work for an indigenous organization, mm. so I've had a number of chats with my indigenous mm. colleagues, and as we were talking yeah. earlier, the little people, middle people, and big people are just like your neighbors. Mm. Um, it's not folklore, yep. it's a reality. Mm. The little guys are probably mischievous, um, can get up to no good. Mm. It seems to be that they can taunt people. Mm. Um, and a lot of my indigenous colleagues are actually quite scared of them. Yeah. Uh, one had... Probably, probably quite rightfully yeah. so. I've heard a few stories that uh, makes me think twice, actually. And as you know, um, Jason and myself, we've been going bush mm. you know, at night and you're there in the pitch dark and yeah. the big fellas don't bother me too much. Uh, I don't want to annoy the little little no. fellas from the hills, uh, eastern foothills uh, of Perth. Uh, as you head into the, um, you know, it's part of the Darling Ranges and you head into the big yeah. forests east. And um, there's also been extensive history of sightings there. And uh, my daughter, who I refer to as Eagle Eye, because she doesn't miss a thing. Right? You, you know her. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, my daughter spotted uh, a structure from from the road as we were driving past, and we managed to get access to it. And it was absolutely amazing. And it was probably four foot at the at the tallest, yeah. Yeah. and was just like a hunting blind. Yeah, 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 and it was yeah. facing suburbia yeah, yeah. on the other, like probably 150 meters away. And if you were in, sitting in this in at night and just watching whatever was going on, no way in the world you'd be spotted. And uh, yeah, interesting. Alrighty, doing well so far, Jason. All right, costume change.
Okay, so they're definitely mischievous, mm. at the very least. Yeah. Um, the stories that my colleagues have told me, you know, they range from... Because they had, um, uh, like, a hex or a voodoo yeah. put on them. Uh, they were actually up to a lot of no good. And they actually had to seek the help of an elder. Mm. Uh, probably won't mention towns, but, you know, mm. maybe 100 k south yeah. of here or thereabouts. Yeah. There's an elder that has a connection with the Buddhaji. Yeah. And mm. if people have a problem... Uh, they can seek him out, he'll go and talk to them, I guess, or however it goes, and resolve that. Mm. Um, as I said, a previous client of mine, I uh, said maybe 20 or 30 years ago, I think some First Nations fellas killed a little guy. Yeah. Three of them were involved in it, and he said all three of them ended up dead yeah. within about a week or two. Yeah. And I think... Uh, I think it was like, you know, one might have had a heart attack or... So the deaths were not in themselves overly suspicious. No. But, yes, yeah. they all... It was rumoured they killed a little fella mm. and then they yeah. all... Fell we should there. probably explain for any international listeners, you know, this... Um, uh, the Aboriginal, I suppose, if we call it law, it's... Uh, as in L-O-R-E, it's... Uh, extremely powerful stuff mm. um, I, I was working for many decades with one of the uh, emergency services and I was I have seen stuff that I cannot explain mm. and I was completely zapped by an elder um, lack of a better term a medicine yeah. man clever fella yeah and it's uh, yes yeah, one of the more incredible experiences mm. of my life and i've had a few like most people haven't wants you sort of get on a bit but you so, know it's just don't want to underplay how strong i guess this is. i'm actually yeah, yeah uh, mm. that's good you've said that mm. uh that for the international audit mm. audience mm. you're right mm. uh as it's probably known to a degree globally yeah. you know uh the first nations australians here have been here for fifty thousand years yeah. or sixty thousand years yeah i heard a hundred thousand latest uh Theory or thinking, yeah. Either or, mm. a long time, yeah. and their traditions and their law, L O R E, is deep mm. and well known. Unfortunately, due to colonization, you know, mm. recent times, a lot of it's been lost, but there's still some threads of that yeah. that go through, and those threads extend to the little people, middle yeah. people, and big people. Mm. And without a doubt, they're there. So, this previous house uh, that I had where they put the West Australian millet grass. Uh, yeah, they were probably there. I reckon I could smell them two to three times a week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I used to put the scraps in the backyard and yeah. sometimes, because I asked one of my indigenous friends, I said, well, you know, what should I do? He said, cook them up a bit of meat, mm. put it out for them. He said, don't cook too much, otherwise they'll come to expect it. Mm. Uh, occasionally I'll put some, you know, uh, cook some stuff up and put it out and it'll always be gone. You know, I don't know if the ravens took it or yeah. whatever, but mm. you know, hey. Uh, they were very present there. Um, where we are here right now, they're not here. They've no. actually never been here. Mm. I can't smell them, there's no presence. No. I think, how about, how, if, sorry to interrupt, yeah, no. but uh, where you grew up on yep. the farm, yep. Uh, which is a township, uh, I suppose we can say it's further northeast. Further east than here. East, yeah. yeah. And uh, did you feel or smell any presence or uh, were you ever aware of any presence prior to the experiences you had or, or in between, after, whatever? There's always been, so if we maybe do it in another instalment, but mm. all the families had some experience yep. with something that is yep. other mm. on the property. Yep. Um, I don't recall the smell. No. Mm, no, I yep. don't. It's a bit, you know, it's almost strange that night we're out shooting, mm. spotlighting for the people from the UK. Yep. Lamping, <laughs> yeah. as it's called. Um, that was probably the, f that is the first time yeah. that I directly mm. recall something like that. Mm. And just going through my memory banks. No, and look, as I said, as you know, I used to walk that property, walk kilometres and kilometres, yeah. you know, shooting rabbits. Mm. Uh, 
No. Mm. And we used to camp in the bush as kids. Um, no, I don't think yeah. so. Now, as you know, I'm from Scandinavia, and you know you're a, you're a man of uh, <laughs> the sunburnt country. Um, I, when I first arrived here, and I've travelled wide and far um, on this continent since, I was completely gobsmacked by the energies that this mm, country yeah, holds, yeah, yeah. and that's another thing. Just you know, most Aussies are aware of, but. Um, international views uh this country has got spots everywhere where there's such a strong intense energy and um a lot of these experiences are sort of drawn to this too i think you mm. know like energy spots like uh you know where jason and i we've talked yep. about it yep. where we've been going recently yep. pretty remarkable place yep. and uh, that's also quite a significant cultural place uh you know so um, to maybe to wrap it up for now, uh, we'd love to chat to you okay. again because you are a man of the universe. <laughs> Takes one to know one. Uh, and I'll be seeing you at the gig tomorrow anyway. Yes. But hey, maybe we get 10 minutes and we can do the story. Here's a teaser. Yep. The story about... Uh, the star people. Uh, yes. So I've had two experiences with the star people on the farm. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Both my brother and my mother have seen the lights in the bush. So there's at least three family members uh, that have seen the lines. Mm. And as I've said for all viewers, and particularly those that are in the land, on the land, work the land, walk the land, uh, particularly farming families, you're familiar with the land. You know what's going on there. You've been all around it. You've worked it for generations. When something odd occurs like these things, there's no doubt that it's something other. Yeah. It's not someone's tractor or it's gas in the ground, as they say. It's, yeah, we've all seen the lights in the bush mm. uh, and there's no doubt about it. And yeah, I think that's, yeah. I think we'll that's get, it. get yeah. to that, yeah. uh, see if yeah, we yeah. get a moment tomorrow night or something, if yeah. we, uh, even after the gig, if you have 10 minutes, just yeah. <laughs> we can uh, have a little pick at that one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've also, I've uh, seen the lights in the bush yep. uh, on one of the tricks. Oh, before we go, uh, one of my work colleagues at the previous workplace, mm. uh, it's funny, and those who have had these experiences mm. get drawn, drawn together, they are sort of 100, 150 kilometres north of Perth. There's a reasonable strip between Durian and Lancelin that's, mm. you know, it's just the coastal scrub. Yeah. There's no, mm. no, no uh, urbanisation. He said his mate stopped to have a pee one yep. night. Uh, uh, and uh, I think the mate went into the bush and they heard this God almighty howl or mm. scream, which he said was unlike anything yep. that he had heard before. Uh, and they high tailed it out of there very, very, very interesting quickly. because... Oh. There you go. Oh, nice one. Oh, is it? Oh, there, there you go. There we go. Here's a bit of Australia uh, uh, for you. Uh, 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 That's uh, uh, enough. That's I'm enough. Leave it, leave it. Leave it. Good leave it. girl. Oh, that's yeah, a lizard great. you were talking about. Yeah, oh, excellent. Sorry, folks. Black tail, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. black spotted <laughs> tree monitor is just and across excited, the wall. Yeah. Excited yeah. Dog, dog as well. Yeah. Uh, very interesting to hear because <laughs> Caterby. Got it. Uh, oh yeah. Very similar thing, which is in the same general area. Uh, you know, I mean, in Australian context, same so general area. Yeah. Yeah. Talking quite a few miles here, but anyways. Uh, Similar story, a uh, couple, uh, it was fairly late at night, I think, uh, pulled over to have a, have a leap. Uh, and uh, you know, I think the husband did his business or didn't need to do it, but the wife had gone out, found a bush and off she went. Similar thing, a uh, big shadowy figure yeah. appeared and uh, an almighty roar, like same thing, like nothing she'd ever heard. So there's definite, there's activity, I believe there's activity everywhere in this country. Um, you don't hear much from South Australia, not much from Tassie, a bit, little bit from Northern Territory. And um, I could mention that um, the East Coast is obviously dominant mm. and uh, which there's heaps of stuff going on there, no doubt about it. Um, I've just, I'm 
just about to um, launch this Facebook site. Okay. Um, uh, figured we'd launch this thing we're calling Yow EWA. Yep. And, uh, you know, we'll see if we can make it a, a pretty healthy and reasonable and sane forum mm -hmm. for open discussion of yep. this absolutely amazing topic. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. You are welcome. Thank you. I'm looking forward to the gig. Yeah. And if we're really lucky, Jason might actually include uh, a little uh, a little uh, salute as we exit. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you. See you, folks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.